Hello, and welcome to the Inside EVs podcast for October the 16th, 2020. This is episode number 28. Today, we'll be talking about the model, the Tesla Model S getting a price cut. All Teslas get a range increase. The Lucid Air base price has been revealed. And Hyundai Kona electric sales and cars are on fire. I'm Don McKeone, Inside EVs editor and Inside EVs forum moderator. Joining us today, we have Tom Malogny, long time and multiple EV owner and Inside EVs editor. We also have Martin Lee from the EV News Daily Podcast, available on all your usual podcast platforms. And of course, we have Kyle Connor from the Out of Spec Motoring and One Lap YouTube channels. He also puts together the super awesome videos for the new Inside EVs YouTube channel. Go subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications. So welcome, gentlemen of the panel, the audience. We've got lots of news this week. But uh, let's start this off with uh, Lucid has revealed the specs and base price of its uh, Air sedan. So in case you're unfamiliar with the Lucid Air, it was just officially revealed on September the 9th. At that time, we were given the price of three of the trim levels. The Air Dream Edition, available spring of 2021, is uh, $169,000, which is a lot. Uh, the Air Grand Touring, available mid-2021 for $139,000. And the Air Touring, coming late 2021 for $95,000. Now, at the time, we only knew that the, the base Air model would be under $80,000. Uh, so now we know the exact amount. So, Tom, would you do, the, do us the honor of giving us the range uh, price? Uh, so you have the price, the range figure, and when it will be available? And why or why not? This is a great number. Okay, so first of all, many of you may have seen the big sixty nine nine splashed on uh, Inside EVs and on and on other sites. Uh, but one thing we have to remind you is that's including a federal tax credit. I hate it when manufacturers list their price after some sort of incentive, and Lucid yes. is guilty of that here. Um, the price of the base uh, air just called the Lucid Air, uh, is $77,400, not $69,900. Now, granted, most people that buy it will qualify for the federal tax credit. You Typically, if you're going to buy a $80,000 car, you're probably paying at least $7,500 in federal tax so that you will get that tax credit. Uh, but uh, I, I just find it as disingenuous, and I don't like it, okay? End of rant. Uh, so um, the, the base air has a 406 mile estimated EPA range. You'll note that's just slightly more than the current model S offers at 402. Uh, it has 480 horsepower rear wheel drive powertrain. Uh, an all wheel drive option is available, uh, but we don't have uh cost on that pricing. Uh, it uh, goes, as I mentioned, it goes 406 miles per charge. So we don't really know the size of the battery, but we do know that the, the more expensive versions of the air that are EPA rated at 517 miles per charge have 113 kilowatt hour battery pack. So if you do some simple math, you come in at somewhere around 88 kilowatt hours for the battery pack. Now, that, that, that to me is, is what excites me the most is that Lucid is able to squeeze out so much range on not a huge battery pack. By comparison, the Jaguar I-Pace, I know it's a different form function. It's, a, it's, it's sort of a crossover the I-Pace, so it should be less efficient. But the Jaguar I-Pace has a 90 kilowatt hour battery, about the same size as what this should have. And the 2020 I-PACE is gonna be EPA rated, rated at 253 miles per charge. So 253, 406, that's, that's how efficient Lucid is. Even more efficient per kilowatt hour than what Tesla's been doing, which is amazing. Um, that's the big news here, that we have a new automaker for the first time coming to market that um, is, is hopefully promising to go further and charge faster than Tesla vehicles can. That's, we've never been in this territory. And uh, I think that's probably part of the reason why we've seen so much action, uh, or maybe we call it reaction on Tesla's side of late with range increases, price drops, 
Elon does not like to be beaten at anything. And it's almost as if he's taken this personal between him and Rawlinson. And, uh, you know, he tweeted out the other day, the gauntlet has been thrown. And uh, so this is his right. reaction. And that's what we're going to be talking about next. Uh, tes tes Tesla has, has certainly made their statement after Lucid came out with this. So 480 miles or 480 horsepower, is that what that says? 480 horsepower, 80, okay. right, and that's the rear wheel drive. This is the dual uh, motor all wheel drive version, which you can have optional. It's going to cost more. You know, we'll 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 obviously you know have more power, but still, you know, that's every value, car doesn't though. have to. That, it's tr it's it's very good value uh, in my opinion. But every car doesn't have to be a, a 10 second quarter mile car. Well, this right, is going right. to be more than fast enough for most people. We don't, not, we don't know not how for fast. Kyle, but. You know, fast enough for you and me, Dom. Do we, do we know how fast this is? How quick it is? No, they didn't release the uh, performance figures for that. Okay. Well, do we know what the slowest other versions are? Or in... I, I don't think they talked f uh, about what the slowest versions are. Okay. If they did, I missed that in the in in the press release. Um, you know, they're right now they're really just talking about what their baddest and best will do. Right. It's got to be, it's got to be under six seconds though, at least I would imagine. Right. I would think so for, for, for even the slowest version of it. I mean, it's almost 500 horsepower. Yes. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a lot of horsepower. <laughs> that's right a lot on. of horsepower. And all the torques as well. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Uh, yeah. That's a good value, man. If I was uh, in that income bracket, I'd, I'd be giving that a look. That's, uh, that's a lot of miles and, you know, listen, especially you go into st some states here that have additional um, rebates, you know, that it, it becomes extremely, extremely attractive. Uh, even at sixty nine nine sure. after the federal tax credit, it's 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 a pretty compelling uh, vehicle. Compare that to the the, uh, you know, the conventionally fueled vehicles out there from Audi and BMW and so forth. Um, take a look at what sixty nine nine gets you and compare it to this. And I think it holds up really well. Right on. Okay, well, it's impossible to say for sure if there's a connection here, but Tesla has reduced the price of its Model S. Uh, the day the day before Lucid announced its base air model price, Tesla chopped its, the price of its large sedan in the U.S. So the the Model S Long Range Plus was marked down from uh, three thousand dollars or four percent from seventy four thousand nine hundred ninety dollars to seventy one thousand nine hundred ninety dollars. The Tesla, the Model S uh, performance ludicrous mode was reduced by 3,000 as well, or 3.2% from $94,990 to $91,990. But wait, there's more. The, uh, the next day, Elon Musk took to Twitter to announce the following. The gauntlet has been thrown. The prophecy will be fulfilled. Model S price changes to 69420 tonight. And sure enough, the price of the Tesla Model S range, Long Range Plus in the U.S. received an additional cut of $2,570, making the total reduction $5,570, which is not insignificant even for that market. Uh, the performance version didn't get the second reduction, by the way, or the, the plaid version, which is still $139,990. So some people are saying that the price drop is connected to the Lucid pricing announcement. And again, that's impossible for us to know. For, you know, it's it's hard to see what's inside the, the mind of Elon Musk. But uh, I think it could be just as likely to be, to be competing with the Porsche Taycan or, or to address like slowing demand for the Model S as well. Uh, one thing about all this is true to me, the, the Model S long range is a pretty compelling value at $69,420. And uh, it's a known quantity with great range and performance and available now, or at least four to eight weeks after ordering. The, the Lucid base air that we were just talking about, that doesn't arrive until 2022. So, you know, while it's a great value, it's still a couple of years away uh, or like at least a year and a half, let's say. So, Kyle, what do you think of this price cutting? Is the 69,420 thing too juvenile for you or, or would you or do you think it's OK to have a chuckle out of dumb joke and enjoy the savings? Well, it doesn't do anything for me. I think it's kind of silly. I also think yeah. the price drop is needed. I think the Model S and X are weaker than they've ever been in terms of their product offering, especially when you compare to 3 and Y, uh, especially after what we'll talk about later in the show. I, I think they are 
uh, needing an update badly. We need uh, something cool. I mean, Lucid's getting the, the efficiency game here. They're getting their premium quality. The Model S still look and feel the same as they have since their refresh in October 2016 and pretty much the same since launch. It's getting a little long in the tooth. I still love the car. Um, do I think it's priced more appropriately for what you get now? Yes, the specs are great. It's still going to work better for some people than 3 and Y. It certainly feels better than 3 and Y in certain scenarios such as cruising down the highway. They float really nicely, something that the other op options can't do. But in terms of this price change, I think it's just more appropriate to where it should be, and maybe it'll start making the used values of these cars a little bit more realistic, because I was looking in some 100Ds and even some long ranges of, of the Raven cars are uh, really holding value very well, which is good, um, but it's also very weird to me that that this is happening. So what uh, you know, I don't dictate used values. People can try, you know buy the cars for what they want, but um, I, right now it would make sense to just get a new one. But I think this is in preparation for something that we'll see soon, uh, because as we've spoken about on the show before, I see no possible way that the Plaid Model S will look like that. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, it's going to be different. And they're probably just trying to get the last of the parts and fulfill their contracts for Model S and X out of the door. And then we'll start seeing some exciting stuff within the next six months. I hope you're right. Because the Plaid's going to have to have the new the new battery, right? 4680. And that so I, I don't know how you can do that without re-engineering the whole thing, which means crashing it and uh, recertifying all the things. So if you're going to go through all that bother, why not do the whole car, right? Like Elon Elon previously talked about, or he tweeted, or he said something about a seven-seater version of the Plaid, um, and not with two child seats in the back, but would fit adults. Now, that is not possible with the current design. Those two jump seats in the back, if they bought them back for Plaid, yeah. are kiddies and kiddies only. So if he's saying, you know, we're going to make a seven-seater and it'll fit adults com comfortably... This was a while ago he said that. That is a definite redesign of hmm. the back end of the car. That would be interesting. I don't, I'm not, not familiar with that tweet. But, hmm. So, Tom, a good price for you? Yeah, uh, you know, kind of echoing Kyle's statement there. This was overdue. Uh, you know, for, for a while, the, the Model S literally cost twice as much as a Model, y, as a Model 3. You know, you could get a Model 3 for 37.9 and the Model S was 75.99. So, uh, you know, it just, the Delta was too big there in the price. And for what you got, just, it, it just didn't make sense. Unless you absolutely needed that extra space for a larger family, you know, it just, it didn't warrant it. I mean, the, the problem is it wasn't that the Model S all of a sudden was not competitive. It was that the Model 3 was too good. You know, it, was, it offered too much at such a good price that, you know, it just rendered the, the higher model, like, you know, obsolete almost, you know, and that's why we saw Model S sales just crater, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it, this is bringing it a little bit more in line, but like Kyle said, also, um, Model S is getting long in the tooth and, you know, it's still, uh, I tell you, it still looks good. I see new ones driving down the road, but, it, you know, it's been out now for, for what, almost nine years. Yeah, so, I mean, that's an incredibly long period of time for uh, the, a vehicle that basically it looks the same other than a, a small refresh a few years in, uh, you know, it's, it's time to give us something new. And I think that'll really invigorate, uh, you know, the sales for the Model S once we see the Raven kind of a redesigned, refreshed look, longer range. And if Martin's right, and I, I, I'm with you, Dom, I hadn't seen that. I missed that seven seat um tweet about the model s i mean that would that would really um that moved the needle for a lot of people uh i i th I, I, I'd, I'd like to see how they could do that you know uh, right like in, in a sedan form how do you get like a third row or a couple extra seats in there without yeah without doing the old jump seat thing again no, you, absolutely i mean I, I was at the model y launch uh last year okay. and they had the uh third row seat for the model y and, uh, you know, and they had it forward facing. Now, since then, there's been a lot of speculation that it's going to be rear facing uh, because, you know, we just don't know how it can work. Uh, and I know the S is a lot longer, but, uh, you know, I, 
saying you're going to do it and then making it work are two different things. The, 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 I still want to see the Model Y with forward-facing seats that have any kind of legroom. I, I sat in the vehicle at that first launch, and I looked behind me where the, the – now they had removed the, the, the rear seats when, when, when the media came in to drive the car, or, or it was a different vehicle. And there was just, there was just no way they were going to get – front facing seats back there, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting for that, which I think we're going to supposedly be getting soon. Right. Uh, and I, I feel the same way about the Model S. Like I said, it's a longer vehicle, but the way the, the rear slopes down the hatch, I just don't know how they could do that. Uh, well, we're going to talk about this. A little, we're going to talk about this a little later on, but we might as well sit where we have this big Tesla news that just came out. So let's mm-hmm. just get this out right now. The uh, seven seat Model Y is uh, coming to market soon. Uh, Elon tweeted out on Wednesday afternoon that it will go in production in November and arrive in customers' driveways in December. So that's pretty soon. So we're not sure how big a deal this will be. Uh, I ex- expect the two added back seats will be super tight, like like Tom was saying, and limited to children or small adults for short periods. Um, but lots of people have said that, that a seven-seater would never even be produced. So even just having it is a win. Uh, and if it doesn't prove popular for whatever reason, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla stops making it, especially if they have this new design coming out with a seven seat. Um, so, yeah, so we'll just leave that there for now. And let's get back to the kind of the big news of the morning. And that's like all the Tesla Tesla models have gotten a range increase. Actually, that's one of our stories where we were going to talk about just the Model X getting bumped up. It got uh, it now gets. Uh, so let's, I guess we'll start with the Model X. Um, so the Model X long range now gets 371 miles of VPA range, uh, which is pretty impressive. And the funny thing was last night I was looking this up on the EPA website and it didn't have that updated figure. Uh, it still said 328 miles. So anyways, but it's improved by 43 miles. And I guess that's due to mostly efficiency improvements on the Model X, the EPA site says that it gets like a 96 uh, miles per gallon equivalent and the new number is uh, 105 uh, mpge so that's something so yeah so we know that's happened and the tesla model s sedan that range looks the same except the performance model it gets a boost martin want to take it from uh, <laughs> want to take it from here yeah I, cer- I certainly can do we can talk our way through the um Probably the easiest thing to do is talk ourselves through the Tesla uh, Tesla site because okay, like everything has uh, like everything has changed. Um, so uh, so where do you want to start? Model S? Did we go through those? Yeah, we did the Model S. So I mean, yeah, we, well, we did the Model S regular one. And the performance has a has an update that we don't know about yet. So I guess we start there. Yeah, we can you know we can go through those in terms of the uh, the the, uh, the 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 change. Um, so 387 uh, on the EPA, which is um, heading towards 400 miles, which is pretty good for a uh, for a, a performance car to be yeah. edging towards 400. The WLTP, because of course there's EPA, which is pretty accurate. WLTP, uh, which is uh, over here in Europe. Well, ironically, the W is standing for worldwide, but um, <laughs> but don't get into that. Um, but I think the way the US measures it is is more accurate. But the uh, our numbers over here, it's something like three nine. I need to check uh, something like three nine six or uh, for the you know for the yes three nine six, uh, which is now four miles away from four hundred miles uh, certified on a performance car, which is just you know fantastic. So well done to the team for making by the sounds of it on the S uh, and the X. Lots of small improvements. So iterative hardware changes, iterative software updates and, and working on control systems. We know they've changed the tires across all four cars uh, and they're changing the wheels. So those those things added up uh, lead to... And we know that Panasonic have been uh, talking about a 5% improvement out of the 18650 form factor cells. So improving the chemistry in those as well. And... All of those things combined for more range for the S uh, and the X, which we can go through the the X again. I kind of have all the UK numbers in my head up here, so um, okay. Uh, so I think I'm in the US uh, US website of the Design Studio um, right now. So the latest numbers uh, for the S, the X. I'm sorry, three seven one for long range plus, uh, and this will be the lowest. So three four one. 
So a big difference there uh, for the uh, performance model, but not such a big difference on the measurements over here. So that would be uh, 348 for the long range plus and 340. So again, only a delta of eight miles there. So if you're in the design studio thinking, oh, you know, what do I do? Do I get the cheaper one that's lo long range or the more expensive one that is more performance but less range? Well, if you're on the design studio over here, you've only got an eight mile difference to worry about. So, okay, I get eight fewer miles, but all of the extra performance on the S and the X, then 2.6 well, seconds. Yeah, so uh, you may as well go go big. And the 0 to 60 times, did they change for the S? Because this news is so breaking as we're recording this podcast. Um, right. Did did they knock off 0.1 second? No, that's the three. That's that's the that's the model three. As you were, carry on. Where should okay. we go next? <laughs> okay. So yeah, so it wasn't just the model th model S, and model X, but the three and model Y also get range increases and pretty significant ones. Martin, and, and plus there's all the... We were, so last week we were talking about the Model 3 getting a refresh, some added changes, uh, you know, some of the bits. So I think Martin has some information on that as well. So let's just go through like the, the little changes to the Model 3 and we'll hit hit up the other range changes as well. Okay, let's. I'll start with range because I'm in this screen um, okay. right now. Okay. So at long range, well, standard range plus 263 uh, is the new EPA range estimate. Uh, the... Long range model three is now certified at 353, which is 31 miles more than it was yesterday. I mean, I find that incredible. It's so, a lot. That's a big change. Uh, big. And I think the 0 to 60 time has come down 0.1 or 0.2 seconds. And the performance model three is now 315. And I'm sure that was below, again, these EPA numbers. I'm here in the UK. That was below 300, right? Uh, yesterday. That's now 315, and that's definitely a, 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 a speed boost, not to six. I think it was 3.2 this time yesterday. Uh, so that has changed. So those are the Model 3 range updates. Uh, and then we'll quickly cover off range on Model Y okay. whilst we're here. Sure. Uh, and so while we're talking about uh, mileage, uh, of course, only two to pick from, but 326 for the long range. And then on the EPA... Not much less, actually, 303. Right. Uh, and so at the end of this kind of segment of talking about all the range increases, the interesting summary that I would give you is that Tesla now sell one car that doesn't do more than 300 miles. And I think that's significant. And that's the Model 3 standard range plus. Wow. That's so amazing. Their entire range, apart from one, does more than 300 miles. And so that, Model Y performance is even over 300 yeah, uh, 303 miles. When that happens, you think, well, that makes Elon's tweet of a few weeks ago where he was saying, oh, I think all car makers, you know, the minimum is 300. He was kind of being slightly cheeky and uh, throwing the throwing his own gauntlet down to all the others. Right. They only sell one car now that doesn't meet that benchmark. So, is it, Hey, Kyle, is that 3.5 seconds to 60 on the Model Y performance? Is that, a, is that increased or improved? I uh, can't remember. It sounds fast. <laughs> uh, Looks fast as well. You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, did it need to be any faster? No. Are we complaining? No. So right on. Sounds great to me. Yeah, so that's a, that's good. that could really be a bigger boost to Model Three sales. Even I think with this, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I believe they're making as many as they can make make sales for anyway. But it, it's not going to hurt demand. It's a hard sell to go for Model Three over Model Y for the long range and performance because the Model Y can drives the same, does everything the same, but it's easier to get in and out. You have more yeah. room and you can tow. Uh, and it's not that much more money. The Model 3, I think really we've seen an, a, a solid steady stream of standard plus buyers because they're the they're not budget buyers, but it is sure. the entry level least expensive option. When you bump up to the big battery packs, you get a big increase in price. Yeah. And at that point you're like, well, I'll just get the Y. And really, I think right now, the only thing the Y doesn't have that the three yeah. has in the performance is track mode. Um, but this is promised to come. Uh, so I still don't see this as any uh, way to tip someone over from getting a three instead of a Y. But, um, but that's uh, what do you guys think? Do you do you think this makes the three stronger in comparison, or are they just lifted equally? I think it helps it. Yeah. I mean, okay, go ahead, Tom. Sorry. No, I was I was going to say the the latter, Kyle. That they're both lifted equally. You know, I I don't really think it makes a a a, a big difference either way. But the, going back to what Martin 
mentioned about the range. The big story for the Model 3 that I'm looking at is that 353. You know, that's, that is, how did they add over 30 miles of range? Like that, you know, that's not just tires and wheels and the heat pump. You know, you know, that's, that, that that's 10%. Like, you know, think about how the other auto manufacturers are just like, trying to squeeze out another 10 miles. So the car, you know, looks a little bit better. Like I mentioned before, Jaguar, you know, they, 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 they just boosted the, um, the I-Pace after, you know, a few years of being uh, available from 234 to 253 for the EPA range rating, you know, uh, 20 miles. And like, that was like a huge deal for them. And, you know, Tesla's just like nah, 30 miles. Here you go. Here's an extra 30 miles. It, it just, you know, it, it, it's just part of, the, the, the secret sauce that Tesla has that makes people so enamored with the brand that, you know, they just seem to keep making the cars better. It's just constant. It's not, you don't have to wait years for it to be better. You know, it's every few months, the cars get better. And, uh, you know, it's just, we're not used to this in the automobile industry. This is like cell phone stuff, you know, where in six months, there's a new version that's, you know, 10% or 15% better. And it's part of, you know, you know, why we see Tesla stock just going through the roof, uh, you know, over the last few years, it's um, they're doing something really special over there. And, uh, you know, it's 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 amazing to watch and be part of reporting on it. This is this is not normal, you know, and uh, right. it's a uh, good good on them for for making these kind of improvements. Yeah. I mean, we uh, we might have done this show two or three weeks ago where we talked about these were, were rumors and we all unanimously went. Well, it's nice they're updating it, but we don't think it's this. Not this isn't a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'll hold my hand up there. This is a huge deal. This yeah. is another thirty-one miles out of uh, out of a car. Now, uh, I don't know how much of this is an existing Model Threes. How much of it is hardware that's been filtered in? The heat pump is certainly not. The heat pump is certainly a you know one day the factory stops making. A spec of car the next day there's a heat pump inside it but other things how much of that can be eked out with software and algorithms I, I, I don't know so good news for existing owners but even better news if you've been holding off to to, to buy a new car uh, as you'll see on the 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 screen uh, if i bring that back up uh, that car looks different because it has what uh, is known as Chrome Deletes, although if there's no Chrome in the first place, you can't delete it. So we'll just call it No Bright Work or Black sure. Trim. Uh, so that's, that's from outside, that's aesthetically the obvious thing. But if you look at the wheels very closely, uh, there are new aero wheels as well. Um, a new design of aero wheels, still called 18-inch aero wheels, but a brand new design on those. Now I've tried, okay. <laughs> I've tried to summarize as quickly as possible the the changes to the Model Three, which were all announced uh, worldwide uh, today, and they include the Model Y's heat pump and HVAC system is that's confirmed. That is uh, moved over completely to the Model Three updating tires across all four cars, updating powertrain and software, the trim updates, which you can see, uh, the satin black side repeaters, the door handles, the bright work is all black now. Uh, I wonder how many third-party services will crop up offering people to put that back or to put chrome on your car, because, you know, it's subjective. Some it people like exists. it. <laughs> oh, it already does it? already exists. Okay, yes. right. That didn't take long. Um, and so, you know, the opposite of what people have been doing to their cars for three years. Uh, more efficient tyres, new 18-inch aero wheels, new 19-inch sport wheels, new 20-inch Uber turbines. If I go to the performance and right. go that you can see those. Uh, so they've finally arrived. People talk about them for four years or whatever. They're finally, uh, finally here. Power lift trunk, something that continues to confuse and amaze me that people are so angry that it didn't have one. I've never owned a car with this, but people right. on social media seem to get very worked up that it didn't have it already. It has now. You can all calm down. You no longer have to give yourself a workout by opening a boot. There is... Uh, the 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 inside the piano finish, which I think was universally hated, uh, is all gone. Yeah. That's now a matte black finish. Uh, there are uh, satin black sill plates, which hasn't really been reported because that's kind of not very sexy, but it's a small detail. There are now uh, graphite finishes on the seat controls. Again, I've not seen that reported anywhere else. And the 
steering wheel. I'm holding it in my mind. A steering wheel, scroll wheels are now uh, uh, me metalized. Um, there is the uh, magnetic sun visors, which had been rumored. Uh, they now they they make their way to the Model Three. There are the smartphone inductive charging pads, that new center console, uh, as well with the sliding lid, the USB-C ports, and the USB-A port, an extra one inside the glove box, which of course is locked now, it's pinned to enter, so that at least if someone is doing a smash and grab on your car, they might not know that they've also got to break, try and break into the glove box where your sentry mode and, and a USB or hard drive would be, which of course would take a lot longer. It's you know, not the most, it's not a lockbox, but it would take longer, and that's uh, a risk for someone breaking into your car to spend longer trying to do that. So your data is more secure as well for, uh, for your dash cam stuff. And I think that is it for, I got a whole bunch of another, another figures over here for, for, for WLTP on range, but otherwise we'll all, our heads will all explode in, in, in range, but safe to say all very similar to EPA. Hey, there you hey. go. Did, did they say exactly when they made the switch over to the heat pump in the Model Model 3? They didn't give a date. So okay. It's just that it's from cars leaving the factory now. We think two weeks ago. Okay. So And that includes, so they have the octa valve too, I, I take it. Yeah. I would. It, it, when they say that the Model Y HVAC system has been moved across, you would presume all of that. Right. Uh, pipe work and, and, and the way of moving heating and cooling around the car, either for the passenger cabin and the... the, the uh, battery inverter etc uh i would imagine it's all the same as the model y i'm kind of surprised it took so long for that to happen you know because they're making it for the model you know the model 3 and the model y on, are on the same platform so when they started making the model y I'm, I'm not sure why that didn't happen to the model 3 at, like at that time and like they did have to redesign the front of the model 3 remember there wasn't room for it oh uh, so they did mean, have oh, to make in the front area you mean yeah so the front is now smaller so new model right. threes have a smaller front they had to move everything uh, forward in the car right. um so to, to to fit it in so there was but you're right it's still been six months but it's been a you while know, covid right it's true okay we'll blame it on that's easy huh? <laughs> i know it's not the most sexy detail but one of the things that really has me happy are the new magnetic sun visor clips yeah i, I, I mentioned this before and i'm probably going to get hate comments down below but uh the, the my sun visor clips uh, have, have already broken on my car and i know yeah. three or four other model three owners where they've broken also so i've i took them apart really analyzed the piece it the, the plastic part that attaches to the car is so thin you know like one millimeter thin it's so easy to just if you don't pull the sun visor back if you by mistake pull it down you break the whole thing off and uh you know, I, I, I wrote an article on this back, you know, a year or so ago when, when mine broke like a couple of months after I owned it. And, um, you know, of course, I had the, the plenty of people telling me to stop picking on the little things. And, uh, yeah, it is a little thing, but it's an annoying thing. And it was something that needed to be upgraded. So when the Model Y came out, and I remember I'm watching Sandy Monroe do his teardown, and he's like, this is a really cool little improvement here. Look, they're magnetic. I'm like, Yes, they did it. And I knew eventually it was going to come over to uh, the Model 3. At least I had hoped. So I might have to trade mine in now and get a new Model 3 for uh, just, so I just, can get the magnetic just, sun visor clips. Oh, just the sun visors. I think that's going to push me over the edge. Not the range or the heat no. pump or anything like that. Right. I'm going to get one for the sun visor clips, I think. Man, I actually, actually thinking about that. With these improvements, Tom, do, are you tempted to trade yours in and get like a, 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 a longer range model? I'm constantly tempted to trade my car in to get a new car. <laughs> so, yeah, right. um, you know, the, the interior really doesn't make that much of a difference to me. The range is cool, even though I don't need it. Uh, you know, the 300-mile the, the range that I have on my Model 3 is like, you know, more than I ever need. I'm, I, I'm not Kyle. I don't drive to california to pick up lunch from the east coast <laughs> so you know i that's that's not it's really not an issue for me uh you know i i don't even use tesla i use tesla superchargers like once every month maybe um right. so you know the, the range is is it really doesn't make that much of a difference to me but it is better to have longer range on those rare times i drive r r super far um but yeah i'm always I'm always looking for the latest and greatest. And if it kind of makes sense, then I might consider it. Uh, the one thing that has me tempted was here in New Jersey. Now we have this new $5,000 cash on the hood rebate. So 
um, you know, I would, you know, I'd pay less for the new Model 3 than what I paid for mine uh, because I paid three or four thousand more than what it costs now for the same car. Right. And then I'd get five thousand dollars cash on the hood state rebate and no sales tax here in New Jersey. So it, it might not be that big of a of a of a trade in difference, you know, between my 2019 and, and a new one. So I might have to go over and chat with those the the the, the boys over at the uh, Tesla, uh, you know, showroom in Short Hills, New Jersey, and see see just how much it would cost. <laughs> yeah, you you can we'll privately sell, you can privately sell your car out of state, maybe and get yeah. A, yeah and get a good price and yeah man that's pretty tempting you could even move up to performance now we'll see yeah I, you know <laughs> keep keep going keep going yeah look, look, i mean look at yeah. those turbine wheels man like yeah those are, those are pretty sweet yeah so s soon i'll be up in model s range so uh yeah i you know i don't really need the performance version my car is and i was always a performance guy i mean i put a nitrous oxide kit on my honda crx you know back in the <laughs> late 80s you know i i like a fun drive but the dual motor long range is is you know it's really as much as i need that thing's it's a beast as it is so oh, yeah. uh we'll see yeah compared to traditional vehicles like yeah <sighs> even really non-performance non versions got plenty of performance <laughs> yeah. um all right uh so let's i guess we'll move on from this anything else we want to talk about this okay no i think my my brain is fried with numbers but it's all right. uh, it's a big, it's a bigger story than I think that we were all expecting to wake up to today. Right. Actually, the, so the thing about this, that I'm kind of excited about, is just like the steering wheel knobs. I want to see how they, <laughs> how they look at metallicized. Uh, the, the, yeah, always, the metal, metal, metal ones. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought they look kind of chintzy a little bit, like just the. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is about the steering wheel. It's got this look. It's not super premium looking to me, and yeah, maybe this will help it. You know. Mm. Upgrade the look a bit, but anyway, so the uh, struggle to achieve true autonomy continues. Uh, Tesla will release a full self-driving beta software update to a small number of people who are expert and careful drivers. So that rules me out. <laughs> um, Musk had said that there, and I don't have a Model Three. Um, Musk has said there would be a, a remarkable update to self-driving software soon, and that owners could see zero interventions while on autopilot during their daily driving. Now, I don't know if anyone uh, wants to say any about, anything about this now, but we'll be keeping an eye out for reports from one or more of these drivers and get their reactions. But once it's in its wider release, uh, more to one editor-in-chief, John Neff, has a full self-driving package on his uh, Model 3, so we'll definitely have his opinion when that happens. And actually, maybe that might be a good time to have him on with us, uh, and we can, he can give it to us uh, all straight. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone wants to say anything about the self-driving update coming up. Uh, it's part of the new, I think that's part of the new Zero Intervention update kyle any insight there well i just think it's so funny that they're releasing a self quote unquote self-driving feature complete but only right. to safe drivers because the self-driving portion is not going to be good enough we know this they need to stop calling it full self-driving they need to stop referencing feature complete as it may be sometimes potentially could make it somewhere Possibly. That's it just <laughs> right. really infuriates me the the messaging on Tesla's part for all of their ADAS stuff. Um, honestly, it's it's a uh, very cool technology. I'm not knocking that at all. I, I think it's going to be great. I think, uh, you know, do you beta test this on average human drivers? That's a whole nother topic. Uh, because again, how are they going to vet that people are careful drivers? I mean, I could tell them all day long, I'm so careful and then go to sleep on autopilot. Not that I would do that. But you know, how do they know, unless they're already using the in car camera tracking what I'm doing, even though they said that they're not doing that. So uh, it's, it's very complicated. I'm not so pro on autopilot being beta tested on average humans that haven't gone through proper training um, without proper insurance as well for the, all this stuff. This is going to get pretty complicated here pretty quickly. And um, obviously, uh, if anyone gets this update, the one thing you need to know is you remain in control of the vehicle. Oh, yeah. uh, be prepared to take over any time. Uh, I doubt Tesla will do the proper messaging for that uh, to the end user. Uh, is it going to be cool technology? Yes. Uh, can I not wait to test it out? Yes, I can't wait. It, we're going to do videos on it the whole bit. We already own 
Uh, I'm not going to say who or the VIN number, but we own a early access Model 3 with full self-driving, so it's perhaps that this car will get it. If it is, uh, we will mask the license plate and I'll shoot the video and share it with the world because, again, we actually never signed the contract on that car for early access. It just has it. <laughs> cool. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Cool. So I, I think they would... I don't know about choosing the drivers for this. I would think they would look at the data, maybe uh, how much percentage you're over the, the speed limit, because like, it keeps track of all that stuff. It, you know, if you're speeding, if you're not speeding, if there's like a, a lot of hard accelerations or not. So I, I think maybe it they has can to do with with safe driving while using autopilot. So it's probably the people with the least interventions or the least amount of buzzes asking you to touch the steering wheel. But again. There's probably people who never use autopilot, like this car that I'm referencing. Uh, the owner does not use autopilot in the car ever. So therefore okay. it has no asking the, for steering wheel interventions to put your hands on the wheel. Um, and so, look, I, I think it's kind of silly that they're doing it this way. Uh, really not a fan of it, but am I a fan of the technology 100% and I can't wait to see it do things. It's, it's exciting to watch uh, technology be pushed here and it's great to see Tesla's approach towards uh, you know, autonomous driving or as close as they're able to get with their cars versus some of the others. I just saw a video the other day of a Waymo ride uh, just cruising around the city with no one in the driver's seat. And uh, I thought that was super interesting. Granted, geofence, totally different approach to Tesla. Right. I'm not going to say which is better or worse. It's just great that things are starting to heat up in this space. I think uh, GM's, uh, GM's uh, cruise uh, aut autonomous vehicles or autonomous right. company. In San Francisco. Yep. Right. I believe they have uh, they've gotten permission to go totally driverless with some uh, Bolt EVs with no steering wheels on them. Well, that's interesting because I was following a Chevy Bolt cruise vehicle a couple weeks ago when I was in San Francisco, and okay. it nearly had a meltdown in the middle of an intersection. It was really funny. <laughs> it was like driving, and it went full ABS brake skid, and then hard acceleration. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That doesn't look so good. Yeah, that's kind of that's so bizarre that you you know it just happened to see that you know in in front of you. Because you never hear about this from from the people at cruise or or you know all well, people don't want to tell you the, the bad. Yeah, but it's still the thing is it still probably made it to its destination safely, and that's what counts. But what, you know what happened in the middle it right. wasn't very refined. <laughs> right. Hey, if you're looking at your screen, you can see the the Cruise Origin. That's their autonomous vehicle that they're going to be producing at the uh, Hamtramck factory. Which on if you're, uh, I'm not sure. If it's probably by the time you see this, it's probably going to be on the air already. But we ha we have a uh, a tour of the factory where this is going to be made coming up and, and looking at all the improvements that's going on there. So that's that's kind of neat. Yeah. So T talking about full ABS. Um, skid. It happened to me uh, a couple days ago. I got a, a new update, new okay. software update on my Model 3. And as I was coasting to a, uh, there's a red light, a couple cars stopped at the red light. And I'll usually regen, uh, you know, as far as I can into, and then hit the friction brakes. As I'm, as I'm approaching the cars, uh, plenty of space between you, plenty of time for me to touch the friction brake, but I hadn't touched the friction brake yet. The car went to full ABS braking, you know, and, 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 you know, scared the hell out of me and, uh, and, and literally like threw me, you know, forward and stopped like 20 feet short of the cars that were, uh, that, that were, uh, stopped at the traffic. Light. Maybe I'll, I wasn't going that fast. It was a gradual deceleration, but I hadn't touched the friction brake yet. And it happened the day that I did the new software update. Um, so, you know, I don't know if that was a one-off. It was only a couple of days ago. I haven't driven the car that much after that the last couple of days, but I'm definitely monitoring that. And that was like, I've driven the car 20,000 miles now or whatever for a year and a half. I know how the car behaves sure. as, I, as I'm coasting into or regening down into a, uh, a stop vehicle. And this was different. So I don't know if 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 they're upgrading the 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 you know those features now for this the, this, this new release that they're going to be doing and making them more uh, you know aggressive with uh, you know preventing accidents or whatever, but uh, I did not like that, and uh, I yeah. hope that it was just a one off then. Totally agree, Tom. I have the newest update on my car as well. Mm -hmm. And yesterday had noticed uh, the car didn't actually activate the brakes, but it did activate the forward collision warning, warning with a big sign that says touch the brakes. 
while on autopilot, bear in mind, it did mm-hmm. not break. Uh, I didn't touch anything because I'm like, let's just see what happens. No one's around. And uh, nothing. It just kept going. But the whole like, beep, 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 please take over. Yeah. And then and then it just went back to normal. And it was nothing was around. No big deal. Just so weird. Uh, but these are the things that they got to work through. It's it's all all fun of watching this roll out. And it's all fun of being the owner and customer as a beta tester. Absolutely. And, and I wonder, you know, they're going to release this to a small group of safe drivers. I wonder if, uh, you know, if it's going to expand beyond that anytime soon, or if like, you know, this, this is going to go on for months and uh, that's going to be the release that they promised before the end of 2020. Right. It has to be. I don't see how they're going to give this to, to normal owners without serious uh, training as to what the systems can and can't do. Because even now, we see stories all the time of people falling asleep on autopilot, not paying attention. And that's with the current feature set being marginally pretty good, but not incredible. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you're just going to give normal people... Um, you know, these, these cars without any training, for example, we met some people at a supercharger the other day, I put it on Twitter, it blew up and they literally did not know they could charge their car at home. They had just bought it. Temp tags. We saw them like back in all weird. We're like, Oh, this is definitely their first time charging. They go out, they're like looking around superchargers, figuring out how to turn it on. Alyssa's like, you go talk to them. And so, uh, I, I went over and just was like, Hey guys, congratulations. I see you just got your car. Do you have any questions? They're like, yeah, we don't know anything about it. They handed us the key card and we went our way. Well, you know, the normal person would think, don't you just look this up? Uh, but some people aren't like that. They're expected a handover. And I was like, well, do you live nearby? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, Oh, cool. So what are you doing here? Why are you supercharging? They're like, Oh, well, we're, this is how we charge is that we get around. I'm like, great. Do you live in an apartment? They're like, no, no, we have a garage and everything. I'm like, well, why don't you just charge it there? They're like, what? We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, open up the trunk or the front trunk. You probably got a cable. And they're like, this is a wall outlet. This is like what I charge my phone off of. I'm like, yes, this will charge your car. Go home. <laughs> so, <laughs> Go home. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you don't Save need your to money here. You're wasting time. And, and money. Uh, mm. Actually, I think Tesla gives you your first supercharging free. Uh, at okay. least that was the case. It never logged the first one. But yeah, they just had no idea. So, you know, I spent 15, 20 minutes going through everything, going through plug share. Uh, you know, Alyssa also was was helping with this. And, you know, apps like Chargeway are very helpful for this type of situation. And so, yeah, just lack of customer education. So how are they going to handle the messaging with autopilot for people? Like these are the people that are driving the cars around. And then they're just right. going to say, oh, yeah, by the way, it might mess up. Please take over. But where is it going to, like, explain all of the intricacies of the system in a safe manner? I don't know. I think it's getting pretty sketchy really quickly. Has me really worried. Yeah, they should have at least at the very minimum have, like, some YouTube videos that customers can go and, you know, watch before picking up your car. Have all introduction. I mean, I believe they do have some. They, do. they, they, they do. have a whole a whole set. It's just there's, uh, you know, it's hard to get people to do that. What You really need a human interaction and training right. for people to understand something this complex. Right. We beat up the traditional OEMs. They're dealerships for not knowing about electric cars and not properly explaining the cars to the customers. But Tesla isn't immune to this. They have this problem also at their delivery centers. You know, I, I, I mentioned before, I own and operate uh, chargers at a commercial property that I own in Montclair, New Jersey. One of them is a DC fast charger. It's a CCS only DC fast charger. I can't tell you how many Teslas pull up and Tr- they're, they're they're just trying to figure out they you know some of them might even have a chatmo adapter and they can't understand why they cannot charge here and uh, if I'm there of course I'll go over and talk to them and uh, on more than one occasion I've had the person tell me like no 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 you don't understand this is a Tesla I can charge anywhere the other cars can't use our chargers and before I can get in a word edgewise you know they're that condescending you know, um, I know, you know, I don't need help. Thank you. Okay. You know, okay. you figure that one out and I'll be back here watching, you know. <laughs> um, so, so, we should just have a, a reality yeah. series on this. Well, I've got yeah. bunches yeah. of pictures of them, like overhead <laughs> pictures from my security cameras of them standing out there, like holding an adapter and one person going like this, and, you know, like I, I'm going to make a collage okay, we're gonna one day. We're going to put a book together. Yeah, I'm going to make a collage a book. one day. And it's not to yeah. make fun of the people. It's the, no. I'm, I'm not making fun of the, the customers. What I'm saying is at some point when they picked up this vehicle, this should have 
have been explained to them. The sure. customer that you met, Kyle, should have been explained that, oh, you're probably going to charge at home 90% of the time. You've got a garage. You, you'll almost never use superchargers. You know, and these customers should have been, they should have been handed a piece of paper that showed the different types of plugs and said, you could use this one. You could use this one. This is the only one you can't use, you know, and it, it, it's not hard, you know, but, um, you know, the, 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 the traditional OEMs, their dealers are, are in many instances failing on this. And so is Tesla. So, uh, you know, while they do a ton of things right, there's there's plenty of handoffs that uh, of Tesla vehicles where the customer is not informed properly about charging, which is really the biggest thing that they should be focusing on. You know, Tesla Tom, has I, a, go ahead. Uh, Tom, I know you work with dealers. I have a friend who has two Volvo dealerships in the US, and he tapped me up for some knowledge this week because he knows that we do all this YouTube stuff and live streaming, and I do my podcast. and And he said, "You know, can you just fill me in on on how to do like a YouTube live stream? Like, how does the like the Q and A, like the the not the Q and A, the, the the comments, like the comment section work and things?" I said, well, you know, why is that? And because they want to, you know, they've been in a Volvo dealership for ages. They've probably had people come in and change cars over the years, at least comes to an end, get the new one, get the new one. They're getting more and more inquiries about the Volvo XC40 recharge. Mm -hmm. So they want to put on some YouTube events for their regular, you know, the customers in their database on their email list, uh, where they literally just open it up to a Q&A. And so they got the car on the turntable in the showroom and for their customers to say, like, you know, what what's a plug like where do yeah. i plug it in and mm -hmm. uh, and all those things and and i think it's good but it really is like that's at a dealer level not at a at, at brand level and certainly there is a lot of um many people that you know when when elon and tesla say you know the only way to do it is this kind of touchless delivery buy your car on your smartphone in 30 seconds and your car just turns up and off you go like a lot of the disciples will say like that's the only way to do it but i do think that the ev adoption curve is reaching a point now where like you say someone who's owned who who's not interested in how it works and they don't care about inverters and batteries right, right? right. but they want to know how it works and it's interesting that say like like my buddies like i want to put some sessions on for for people who are curious and then people who have bought it like get a camera, walk around the car, talk them through the infotainment because of COVID they would normally come in. Um, so again, I think that depends on how proactive those dealers are mm -hmm. to educate their customers. Um, and that's not universal. Uh, right. Not at all. And, and, you know, I'm working with two Volvo dealers right now, actually. Um, so here in New Jersey. Um, and, and, you know, they're, they're very excited about the XC40 recharge. I think the, uh, the EPA range rating is going to hurt them a little bit, um, to be quite honest with you, because it's lower than I think what many of us had hoped. But um, 200, you know, two hundred eight miles was it? Yeah, okay. yeah, two hundred eight miles. So, but but um, they're hopeful that they'll that th that this is going to be a, a, a big vehicle for them. Um, you know, w one of the things that I've noticed is that you know, there's some dealers that get it and there's some dealers that don't. And it seems like your friend gets it, that, you know, he wants to get out in front of this. And those are the dealers that are going to be successful with this because as you, we are moving from the early adopter stage to the early majority stage. And, you know, we're, we're going to be getting people buying these cars that aren't EV enthusiasts, that aren't early adopters. They're people that are coming back from with their Volvo lease and they want to see what Volvo has, the latest and greatest vehicle. And, you know, and oh, there's that recharge sitting there and it, it's eligible for a tax credit. It's eligible for no sales tax. It might have a state incentive. You stack them all up and you say, oh, wow, there's there's thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars off this vehicle. That's pretty cool. Um, and if the dealers are interested in being proactive to learn all this stuff so they can answer all these questions and put together a, a, a solid case for the customer transitioning into that vehicle. They're going to do well with, with these cars, but it's very uneven right now. I'll, I'll, I'll work with one dealership and they'll be so into it. There'll be two or three of the salespeople that'll be like, I, we can't wait for this car, whatever. Then I'll go to the next Volvo dealer five miles down the road and They'll be like, you know what? Get out of here with your electric cars. We have we have no interest in these things. Nobody wants them. Okay, you know, next. And uh, you know, part yeah. of what I do actually is 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 actually actually cold calling GMs. See if I can get five minutes with them to explain to them how I can help them sell these cars. Uh, and and you know, some of them you walk in there and they're just they're like, thank God, you know, because Volvo <laughs> corporate isn't giving us the help we need. This is just what we want. And then the next guy, you know, is, is giving me the hand and saying, there's the door. Yeah. Not interested. 
fine. You know, you're the one that's going to be hurt in a couple of years, buddy, not me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's okay. interesting. So uh, I guess let's move on a little bit to the next, uh, next deal. Uh, so meanwhile, all this is going on. Hyundai has a good news and bad news situation happening. The good news is that in September, Hyundai sold a near record number of plug-in electric cars, 8,418 globally. That's uh, up 40.1% year over year, which is, you know, a really nice number. And more than 7,000 of those were the Kona Electric, which is a, as you can see on your screen here, if you're watching us on YouTube, a subcompact crossover, which are four members, the Inside EV's four members are, have pretty great things to say about generally. Unfortunately, there's some bad news, and that is the Hyundai Kona Electric is being recalled, or at least 77,000 of them are. The cars in question were produced between September 200, uh, 2017 and March of 2020, so that's a, a wide swath of all the production, basically. And the recall issue is a uh, has to do with fire. A, so a Canadian Kona appears to have actually exploded somehow in a garage. Um, that's, I think that's the picture we, you can see on the screen now, it blew a hole through the roof, blew the garage door across the street. And the, this might be a little separate issue from everything else going on, but yeah, that happened. Uh, one burned in Austria and there have been one or more fires in South Korea. So I didn't see anything concerning about the recall last night on the NHTSA, uh, website, but an Inside EVs forum member posted that Transport Canada has. And according to that Canadian agency, the issue is as follows. Uh, on certain vehicles, there could be problems with the high voltage battery that cannot be detected by the battery management system. As a result, the high voltage battery could short circuit after it's fully charged. And that leads, of course, to fire. Um, so the corrective action is that Hyundai will notify owners by mail and instruct you have instruct you to take your vehicle to a dealer for inspection. The high voltage battery will be replaced if necessary. The dealer will also update the BMS software to better detect battery uh, problems. Hyundai recommends that you should park your vehicle outdoors and away from other vehicles or buildings until recall repairs are completed. That's a little inconvenient, but it, you know, in the, in the name of safety, it's something you probably should consider doing. Uh, hopefully, this doesn't mean they're replacing all 77,000 batteries because yikes, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. And that, you know, just thinking about the supply chain, you know, you have these, you need batteries for the new ones that you're making now, but then you also need batteries to replace the ones that you've already produced. That's uh, That could really put a crimp in uh, production numbers. Um, so Kyle, would this stop you from, oh, let me, uh, before I ask you that, I just wanted to say as well, um, if you're an owner in the States, you can put your V, your VIN number in the Hyundai uh, website. It's a, uh, it's not the regular Hyundai website. It's autoservice.hyundaiusa.com, all over case, of course. And th then you can see if your vehicle is affected. So, Kyle, would this uh, stop you from buying a Kona Electric or used? Well, look, I, I've spent thousands of miles in Kona Electric in multiple cars in every trim level. And uh, I've, yeah, probably over ten or 15,000 miles. It's a fantastic car, no question. Really good value, uh, you know, pretty practical, good car. Uh, would this stop me? No, but I think I would always have that little <laughs> thing when I park it in the garage in the back of my head. It's like, is it going to get real nice and toasty tonight or am I going to have to put the heater on myself? So, you know, it's going to be one of those situations where I think it's just a thought that's always in your head, and that's going to get kind of annoying. Uh, the big question here is, do Kia Nero EVs suffer the same things? They're a different cell manufacturer, but same pack design. Mm. Uh, you know, we don't know exactly what the problem is. It's just after you full charge. Uh, the Kona has a really great system where on AC or DC, you can set the charge from 10 to 100% in 10% increments. So just charge it to 80% every day. It sounds like that might sure. uh, alleviate some of this problem. Um, you shouldn't full charge them anyway. And so... Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, look, we've, we've owned in my family two Kona Electrics. Mm. They have not caught on fire. They were very reliable. And so it's probably such a small issue um, that it's not a big deal. With that said, though, my uncle owns currently a Kona Electric. And the other day, it wouldn't charge past 40%. Oh, really? 
uh, on an AC charger, and it was because his onboard charger had failed, and so they replaced that. Oh. Um, so maybe there are a little buggy things here or there, and there was also that brake pedal issue now that I'm thinking about, mm. where when it would transition from regen to physical brakes, there would be a gap with no braking power at all, and it was very disconcerting. Mm. Uh, so if you're braking in regen, it does 150 kilowatt regen, locks the wheels, you know, ABS has to kick in basically. Uh, for it to transition from regen to friction brakes and then anti-lock brakes, there was a gap where the car would just coast for a split second. And it, it happened multiple times on multiple cars. It is better on the newer software for a press car I just had, but it's still not completely gone. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, would this stop me from buying one? Hmm, probably not, but uh, certainly not a great thing you want for a company with electric cars and electric cars in general. Um, right. So, Pretty definitely a bad story, I'd say. So you know, one one word on this: uh, we we know it wouldn't stop Kyle from buying one. It probably wouldn't stop any of us here that are very familiar with electric vehicles. But it will it could stop uh, just regular customers that haven't bought EVs yet. And the the bigger concern is that it, this this the problem with possible EV fires isn't limited to the, the Kona right now. We have sure. the NHTSA looking into Chevy Bolt fires. We have in Europe, the Ford Kuga had some sort of an issue. I, I know I'm not really up on that. Uh, Martin might know more about that, but I think there was some sort of a battery problem, right? Um, so, uh, you know, this is the, the bigger problem is if these keep popping up uh, and if God forbid, you know, the next one ends up killing someone or multiple people, uh, that we could have, you know, the general feeling about EVs start to s push back from uh, the fact that I think it's generally acknowledged that they're safe now. When when we when this first wave of electric vehicles started coming out a few years back, that was a concern that the public had. If you remember, there was a, uh, a Chevy Volt had a fire after it was in an accident. Mm -hmm. There were a few Teslas that hit metal poles while they were driving down the highway and it impaled the battery pack. And they went on fire so that this was all the, the news, our electric car is safe. We've got fire here, fire there. Um, and those were isolated incidents. If we start now getting recalls with, with tens of thousands of cars being recalled because they're potential fire hazards and we have pictures of garages with the roofs blown off them, that's going to impact customer perception. So my, 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 my concern here is that, um, you know, the, 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 this could really – hurt the entire industry if if we have more and more incidents like this happening yeah, it'd be a shame too because you know gasoline cars get uh recalls all the time for fire risks i mean it's not it's not at all a rare thing like you really you can see it on, on the regular every month or so there's a you know a decent sized recall for for fire risk i mean there's recalls of for all kinds of things the the i was looking at the uh, website last night and the hyundai kona had it was one recall in the u.s already i think and it but it was like for a sticker that had the wrong uh a gross maximum weight or something sure. <laughs> so that's a recall but you know obviously not an issue this is an issue and uh, yeah but it's something that you know ice cars have have you know, all the time. And so we're just going to have to somehow, I, I don't want to say normalize it but because I, I think there's a path to EVs, you know, getting past all this, you know, any fire risk. I think batteries are getting, will be getting safer over time and software to manage them will, will, you know, deal with that issue better over time. Oh, well, just really quickly, speaking of uh, charging to hundred percent, there's something about the, I've read something, I'm not even positive, I can't say this is necessarily true, but someone was saying that the new LFP uh, made in China Model 3s, they're going to encourage people to charge to 100% because they're... Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. I wondered, I, two, two things crossed my mind, whether um, I need to learn about lithium-ion uh, phosphate, phosphate. Uh, batteries, about whether they behave differently, but also whether Tesla, for the first time with these LFP batteries, have put a bigger buffer in, more akin to what everyone else does. So, yeah, you hundred know, percent on the dash is not a hundred percent of the battery. So, uh, two options there. I'll uh, be keen to hear what the truth is. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting little deal. Um, yeah, so that's the Hyundai Kona situation. And if you're interested in the Hyundai Kona Electric um, or have any kind of issues or whatever, we have a great uh, community of owners on the Inside EVs forum, and you can you're invited to check that out. 
and there's a you know great group of people there. Um, so, Martin, over in your neck of the wood, there's a lot of excitement around this. Uh, it seems to be I've seen some you know on Twitter and things. So the Dacia Spring electric city car is here to electrify the European masses. It sounds like a value based. A little vehicle over there. What can you tell us about it? Well, this, the, uh, Renault announced two vehicles actually this week. Um, okay. The there was the new electric Megane or the E Vision Megane. Megane's been around, I don't know, twenty twenty five years. Very popular okay. car. This is aimed absolutely at that Nissan Leaf buyer. Well, I should say Nissan Aria buyer, really. So this is going to be out in twenty twenty one. It's a, the, the the styling they released was the concept styling. So if it is as half as good as it looks in concept form, it'll be a really neat mainstream family um, wagon, not wagon, if you're thinking estate, it's not a wagon, but as in uh, it's just a really good family hauler. It is a 130 kilowatt fast charging, which is as good as you're going to need for the next five years. It's not the best, but it's very, very respectable if the charge curve is good. Um, 160 kilowatt motor, which is 217 um, horsepower. It AC charges at 22 kilowatts, like the other Renaults, like my Renault Zoe, which is very useful if you're in a country. Many in Europe have lots of 22 kilowatt AC posts around. Many of them are free as well or, or quite cheap. So that's handy for destination charging when you don't want a DC fast charge. 60 kilowatt hour battery in the Megane. Again, all of these solid, respectable specs for a car that wants to come in at a good price. And if you've bought Renaults before, if you've bought Megans before, you go and you get the electric Megane. This will be a great five-seater family car it's on the cmf platform which if that sounds familiar is what their sister slash cousin slash alliance partner nissan is building the aria on but that is years away frustratingly uh, unless they bring it forward renault will beat them to the punch and bring that to market in 2021 to europe the other car which you just mentioned which was the Dacia, which is the Romanian cheap bit of Renault, but this won't be made in Romania. This will be made in China because it's based on a Chinese car that sells for eight or nine thousand dollars equivalent. Always very tough to make that conversion with incentives. Is called the Spring. This I, I love this car. This is such an exciting car because finally we're getting EVs for purpose, right? And that's what so many people can't get their head around because we've been used to one or two EVs on the market and and and, and you know and the, the 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 Tesla way which is it has to be the biggest the best seven seats not to 60 fastest it'll go for a thousand miles actually this is great because we're maturing we're maturing in the EV market and now we can get cars like the Dacia Spring which is a 20 6.8 kilowatt hour battery a 44 horsepower motor i know 125 kilometers an hour top speed I know, and a, and a WLTP range of 140 miles, which is actually not bad from a 26 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, there's a few extras as well. If you'd like air conditioning, you've got to pay extra. If you'd like electric door mirrors, you've got to pay extra. Sure. But you know what? It's going to be the, well, it is, they say that it will be the cheapest electric car on sale. And so the cheapest at the minute is the Volkswagen E-Up, so which is about 18 grand. So what's it going to come in at? 15,000, 14,000 euros, euros po yeah. possibly. You know what? It's it's going to be a really cheap, almost disposable, and I say that with full, you know, awareness of, you know, climate change and let's not dispose of cars, but um but as in if you've got kids and a young family, if you've got a ride-sharing fleet, if you're a company that wants cars that will seat four adults, and, you know, you, the kind of company where they've got the apps and you just find your closest one and, and take it out. Brilliant. So good. It's going to be opening up the EV market to so many people who think that all EVs cost 100 grand. Um, it is not going to be a sexy car. It won't get headlines, but I'm really excited about it. And I won't be able to drive one because they're not making any right-hand drive versions. Oh, really? Sad face. They're going to they're gonna sell them in, in Europe, basically, then? Just like in yeah. mainland so, Europe? No UK no Ireland. Who else drives on the left-hand side of the road? Australia, New Zealand, Ch India, China? Singapore. China? No, Ch oh. China's. You drive on the right-hand side in China. Um, but some big markets. But they're not going to make it in right-hand drive. Boo! Boo! No China. Boo no you, Japan. Dacia. Boo North you, Dacia. Australia. Japan is. Well, Martin. Yeah. Martin, if you just drive around backwards, it would become right-hand drive. Thought of that. That's brilliant. So you're good. <laughs> 
right on. Hey, but you, can you exactly. buy a can you buy a car and drive like on the other side of the road in England, or do you, yeah, do you have to sure. buy? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so you could you could go to France and buy a Dacia Spring and and it license it in the UK. It, sure. Yeah, of course, of course I can. And you know what? If it goes wrong, it's that cheap that I don't mind taking it back to France to get fixed because no Dacia dealer here would know um, what to do with it. And right. um, I'm not sure you if know, you have the range to get back to France, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and when you know, and when you're driving along the road, and the, somebody in front, you know, and the opposite direction is using their mobile phone and careers into your lane, you're you're not on the the, right, the you know the wrong side of the road. So there, you know, there's a good there's benefit it's to driving. Safer. A, <laughs> it's actually safer. Yeah, and you just go backwards through drive-throughs, and that's exactly. It. That's exactly what I'm I to owned do. a right-hand drive car in the U.S. and I would do the backwards through drive-throughs, and everyone laughed because it was a classic Mini. Of course, it's really fun. Okay, and right on. <laughs> and I, I daily drove this car in high school, but I would back, I would drive backwards everywhere, and it just made people smile. And then Brilliant. when you're done, you just J turn and floor it. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's it's so cool. So we're looking forward to um, uh, seeing the, the the price. But and there's a few there's a few sort of unknowns as well. Like in Germany, there's nine and a half thousand euros off cars at the moment but it's so say the car is 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 you know 15 grand doesn't mean right. you get the car for five grand because the car the car makers have to put in three a third of it like three grand of that nine thousand euros and i don't imagine dacia are going to do that because otherwise you will have an ev on sale you know there'll be three grand out of pocket on a very cheap car with no margins and you'll have a five grand car on sale, which is crazy. But they did say, um, or they'll hike the price by three to cover their losses and take... There's lots of options. Um, but they did say that when you factor in the new cost of this with a small battery and running costs over the time that you own it, it will be the cheapest car on sale, including combustion. And that they're, they're out to prove that mission. So I think no, we're going to get... I would buy one here. Cheaper than combustion. If it if it came here, I would buy one. Yeah, just because it's a cool, fun car, 140 miles, great. Yeah, Seats that's... for it, it. It's bigger than that kind of uh, city car, like uh, Volkswagen E up, um, Skoda City Go. It is. It's got the high sides, that sort of crossovery styling on a, in a very small car. But the boot is 300 liters. Like you know, it's it's a practical car. Yeah, yeah. It sounds more practical than the uh, Sparky V. Is it like the, the Candy K20? No bigger. Martin, is it like I, I'm not familiar with the vehicle? Is it like the Candy K27? Oh, it's bigger, bigger than that. Or do you know the Candy? Yeah, is yeah, bigger, bigger than, than that. that. Okay. Let me let me find you. Or the K23 is the bigger well, one. The smaller number is the bigger Look. one for the Candy, which makes right. no sense. Yeah, it's yeah, that's it's so confusing for me. Yeah, the K23 is the bigger one. It's kind of like a boltish, yeah. I think, size. There it is. Hey, that's so good. That's if good. you're watching the show on YouTube. Okay. It looks a lot better than yeah, the candy. Yeah, I'll tell you that. It's probably Absolutely style. fine. Yeah. I love um, the name. Dacia. How do you how do you say spring. it, Martin? Dacia. Dacia yeah. Spring. No, I just I just like the spring. I think okay. that's such a pleasant name for yeah. a pleasant car. Sure. You know, the char the charging is fun because it's uh six point six kilowatt AC charging. That's like what we'd get on most cars here. That's yeah. it. If yeah, you want like my smart car is, is seven point two kilowatt, nothing more. You can uh, so pay for uh DC, you can pay for thirty kilowatt DC charging uh, as a as an optional extra. But you know what? That's you know not what? bad. But but why? Like this this is a car that should be used to do all of those chores sure, and then sit in your road tripper. No 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 no. no. And it, it's yeah. going to sit in your driveway every night. If you do a hundred miles in this a day, you'll be an outlier with this car. Yeah. Uh, I, just I, I totally really agree. excited. Seven inch touchscreen, uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, respectable. Yeah, that's all Love right. It. Win hey. my book. Yeah. Hey, I'll we're, send one over. <laughs> we're, we're way over time here, I uh, just realized. Uh, so uh, just before we go, I just want to say also that Fisker and Magna have uh, announced a platform and ma manufacturing agreement for the Fisker Ocean. So uh, that's uh, one more step towards reality, possibly. And uh, yeah, we'll have more on that in the future. But that brings us to the end of our show today. So I'd like to thank you all for joining. If you have any comments about any of the topics on today's show, you can comment on the Inside EVs podcast post or the YouTube comment section below or on the Inside EVs forum podcast thread. And don't forget, you can find and follow our, our panelists on Twitter. Uh, Tom is at, uh, at Tomalog. Martin is at EV News Daily. 
Kyle is at out of spec and I'm at Dominic underscore Y. Uh, click, click subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications and we'll see you all again next week. Ciao.